All right, we're all prayed up this morning. We're ready to go. Who's excited? Woo! I'm gonna know one more time. Who's excited? Woo! Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for the excitement we feel in this house today, Lord. I pray, Father, as we just sing into your presence, Lord, as you would just manifest your presence this morning. We pray that hearts and lives will be touched. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have you ever said, man, I wish I could? You ever said that before? I wish I could. As an athlete, I remember I used to run track, and I was, man, I wish I could run that fast. Have you ever done that? The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Aren't you glad? Say all things. Say all things.
free. I am free. I am free. I am free. Through you the kingdoms come. Through you the battles won. Through you I'm not afraid. Through you the price is paid. Through you the victory. Because of you, my heart screams, I am free. I am free. I am free to run. I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you.
unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear child of God from my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God you split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God I am a child of God I am a child of God cuz I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child Cause I'm no longer a slave of fear I am a child of God I am a child of
Hallelujah, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful, beautiful praise this morning. Wonderful worship. Thank you guys for those beautiful songs and of praise and worship that we get to experience with each other. Amen. The very first song we sang, Nothing Was Nothing Is Impossible, was the name of that song. And how funny that it kind of ties into what I'm talking today. The chorus of that says, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. And the things that happen to you when you trust in the Lord and you believe in the Lord and you have faith in the Lord are amazing. Um, I'm going to start off with a quick testimony before I go into the message. But I sat down with a wonderful man this week and he gave me a testimony of his. Now, this is a man of, of, of God. This is a man who his, his faith in the Lord is is an example for us all, okay? And it was just a quick, quick deal. He's a, he, he was telling me about some uh, ideas he had for this project he was working on at work and that he wanted to uh, expand his, 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 his offices a bit. And uh, he told me how he, he thought he could do it by just asking the Lord for, for the finances needed for that, right? And as he's going to tell me, you know, I'm thinking, okay, so he's going to ask someone for a loan or he's going to talk to somebody about it, but he didn't. The man was such a man of faith that the person he went to to talk to was a business associate, and he said, hey, I need X amount of dollars because I'm trying to expand this building. And the guy said, hey, okay, well, yeah, let me talk to my owner and see if we can get you the loan. The guy said, nope, I don't want a loan. I want you to give me the money. The Lord says, you're going to give me the money, and, or I'm going to get the money, and I'm asking you if you're going to be the one to give it to me. So the man was taken back by that and said, all right, well, let me go to the owners and ask and see if we can get that for you. Calls him back a couple weeks later and says, hey, I got some of the money for you. It's almost there, all of it. He says, well, thank you. I, you know, I know the Lord's great, but I didn't ask for that much money. I asked for this much money. Right? And that man came, and he prayed, and he said, Lord, I know you told me that I was going to get this money for my building project, and uh, we're almost there. So he told the guy, go back and uh, get that extra amount that we need if you can. If not, I'll just keep looking. The guy calls him back later in the week, says, hey, I got what you asked for in hand, no ties to it. The only stipulation is that you keep staying one of our customers long term. Amen. That's faith. That's because the man of ours picked up his Bible, turned to the Lord and said, Lord, here's what I need and here's what I want. And this is what I need to help us grow and help us move forward into the future. And that's not, that's just an example of an everyday thing. That's an example of someone just, just has their faith in the Lord that says, Lord, you said you would take care of me if I'm faithful to you. And that's what happens. The Lord does take care of you when you're faithful to him. And you don't veer off track and you don't do things you're not supposed to. And you don't lead people in the wrong. But you stay on, tra on path and on track and, and that's a witness. That's, I, I was able to witness something that I was just blown back away. And, and it just actually put me in line because I, you know, I, I feel like I'm blessed. I feel like there's many people here that are blessed. But I think we take our blessings and stop there. And say, hey, okay, that, thank you, Lord, that's all we needed. That's just perfect for me and mine. But it's okay to ask for more. It's okay to ask, to show, to testify, to spread, to share, and to get more from the Lord. Because that's what he has for you. And that's what the word I have today is about. In Proverbs 8, 17, it says just that. The Lord has these riches for you. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasures. Read that again, 21. That I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, and that I may fill their treasures. Amen. That the word of the Lord telling you, I will take care of you, my children. I will give you the things you want if you love me with your whole heart and you seek me with your whole heart. Bring people to me and give me those things. So, you know, sometimes I come up here and I say, hey, no, it's not always about, uh, about having the material things or it's not. But, but the thing is, it's okay to ask for those things when you're faithful. And it's okay to reach for that next step in your life and to get that in the next step in your life. The song says, I believe, I believe. You have to believe that the Lord is going to get that to you. You have to believe that your faith is strong enough to tell you, don't let the devil lie to you. 
The devil's going to tell you, that you're not going to get that. There's no way the Lord's going to give you that. that. That's out of your realm. What I heard this week was out of the realm. What I heard this week on, on that story, when he told me what he was expecting, I'm like, I was already letting the devil tell me, there's no way there's going to be a trick to this story, and there wasn't. The Lord said, I took care of you. I will take care of you. And blessed that man with the amount that he asked for to get that building expansion. Amen? So that's beauty in the Lord. That's praise in the Lord. That's faith in the Lord. So when you have that faith in the Lord and you have that love and that fire and that drive, go out there. Claim it. Stake it. It's yours. The Lord says he will give it to you. Okay? That comes with his love. Honor him with your whole heart and just experience the riches and the wealth that you're going to get from that. Amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for just daily bestowing these blessings upon us. We thank you for the, for the witnessing that we were able to, we're able to see and the testimonies that we're able to hear and the things that we're able to just pull from this earth that shows that you're here with us daily. And we thank you, Lord, that, that people are blessed with new homes and people are blessed with new jobs and people are blessed with new cars and finances and new babies. Lord, thank you for the families that are growing. Thank you for everything you give us. Thank you for the um, abounding just the abundance of riches that we have because that's what we have in this world with your name on it is riches. And we thank you, Lord, and we continue to ask that you continue to bless us moving forward, that we can sustain life and that we can advance and that we can show people that through your love we're gaining and we're gaining and we're gaining and we're just getting to the riches of heaven. And we're going to be closer and closer to you, Lord, and by people seeing that, just light a fire on them to want to come after you as well, Lord. And we just thank you for the for the blessings you bestow on us. I can't thank you enough. In, in, in Jesus' name, Lord, amen. Thank you. All right, guys, if you'd like to bring um, your offerings up, there's a plate up front. Thank you. Think of the kids. He's ready. Amen. If your kids are ready to go to class, I think their classes are ready for you. Got a couple of announcements to go over. God is good. Amen. Just, just amazing. He's just an amazing God. And we are blessed every day. Thank you, Lord. All right, just a few announcements to go over. There's not many, just a couple here. Uh, the first is the midweek Bible study on Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. So uh, if, if you'd like to attend Wednesday nights, we, we're here, or Pastor Kyle and uh, Pastor Jesse and uh, uh, everybody else is here, you know, getting, getting that on. So Wednesday nights, 7 p.m., there's Spanish and English services on that. Um, the youth camp trip, we're coming right along to that. Okay, guys, so... Uh, We've got youth camp, 6th grade and up, Awaken Camp will be held at Camp Sequoia. Uh, that's in Hunt, Texas, going on. That's going to take place during uh, June 26th through 29th. The cost is $90 per camper, and this covers our meals, rooms, T-shirts, and other supplies. Uh, we're anticipating a great year, great camp experience, so uh, you teenagers are going to be going. Uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to sending you guys. Um, plenty of stuff to do. Again, swimming, canoeing games, sessions, and uh, Bible worship, I imagine, is one of the, the biggest uh, targets there, yeah? So um, get with the pastors if you want to go, guys, sign your names up in the back. Um, again, whoever needs to put the kids down, put, put them down, and uh, if you want to bless somebody with uh, uh, one of the uh, fees, feel free to do so. Get with Pastor Kyle or Bianca, and uh, we'll get that covered. Uh, we're going to start working on some benefit fundraisers for this as well, because um, we're sending all the kids, you know, and we're going to try to tackle that that cost for every single one that goes that's the goal that's just that's what we're going to do we're going to take care of each other here so if you got any questions uh, sign up in the back or get with one of the pastors and then they'll get all that over to you just those two announcements i have today again i'd like to welcome uh pastor bianca back and baby emma we have back there the new addition to the church <laughs> amen thank you lord so let's all stretch those legs and uh, welcome each other and we'll get started with the word
Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all today. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Praise God. All right. Well, we're going to jump into this. Um, let's go ahead and pray for us. Father God, we thank you for this morning. And we are so blessed to be called your children. We're so blessed to be in a position to seek you, uh, to love you and be loved by you, God. We're so blessed to, to know your word intimately. And so we just thank you this morning that we're going to be faithful to apply your word to our life. And we thank you that it's going to produce life in us. We thank you that the hurdles that we've been struggling to overcome, we thank you that they're going to be moved out of the way in Jesus' name by the power of your word, not by the will of our effort, but by the power of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Have you guys ever just had a hurdle in life where you just felt like no matter how hard I try, I cannot overcome this? And man, you know what the Bible says? That through Christ... You can do all things. Why? Because it's him who strengthens you. Thank you, Lord. So we always need to be pointing ourselves to Jesus. Amen? We, we're always focused on pointing others to Jesus. We need to focus on pointing ourselves to Jesus. Praise God. So, um, thank you, Lord. Uh, Brother Leon, can I have you and, and your family come forward? I just want to bless you. Don't be afraid. <laughs> I just want to bless you. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes God just puts people on my heart, and I just want to bless. Amen? So we're just going to take a minute and bless you. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I just thank you that, that Brother uh, Leon and Sister Jill, they are blessed in Jesus' name. I thank you for, for blessing the path before them. I thank you for blessing their kids. I thank you for blessing their, their finances in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, for your will in their life. And I thank you that as you lead them and guide them in their path, your Holy Spirit just guiding them along the way. Father God, I thank you that the blessing of the Lord, it makes them rich and adds no sorrow with it. So we thank you, Father God, that the path for them will be light and it will be easy. In Jesus' name, because that's what your blessing does. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord is light and easy. So that, uh, that ought to make us want to just operate under the blessing. Amen? Come on, if, if your life is hard, and you're struggling, and you feel like you're barely crawling, we need to get under the blessing. Amen? Amen. I'm not saying that things aren't going to come against you under the blessing, but I'm just saying that when you're blessed, it's like you're living in your own world, in a cocoon to where it's just, you can't be touched. Amen? Praise God. Well, I didn't hear any amens on that, so that's all right. We're getting there. We're getting there. So the title of today's message is called The Fall of Man. The Fall of Man. And uh, we're going to take a, a look into Satan and how he tempts us and how he comes against us and so that we can know how to, how to stand against him, amen, and how to block his fiery darts, how to stand against the wiles of the devil. And so we're going to learn, we're going to dive deep here into Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 3, the very first sin that was committed in the earth, the very first temptation. We're going to stay here for most of the time today. Pretty much all the time today. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Genesis 3, we're going to read verses 1 through 7 here. So let's read this and then we'll, uh, we'll dissect it. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed the fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. There is a load packed into these seven verses, 
And so we're just going to start breaking it down verse by verse. You guys okay with that? Okay. So let's start in verse 1 here. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? I think it's interesting here that Satan, he's already working to be cunning and manipulative with Eve. And he says, has, has God indeed said, you shall not eat? So what Satan is trying to do is he's, he's trying to plant a seed in Eve's mind. And the reason that he's planting this seed in Eve's mind is, is because he's trying to separate her from God. You know, Satan knows that as long as you are in God, as, as Frank, Brother Frank was talking about this morning, believing in God, submitting to God, Satan cannot touch you. What, is, what, did, what did Jesus say? Jesus said that only one person is good, and that is God, right? Only one is good, that is God. So in order for Satan to get evil to be operating in our life and to get us to fall to temptation and, and the consequences of that temptation, the consequences of sin, he has to get us separated from what is good, separated from God. And that's what he's working to do here with Eve, this seed that he's planting in her. And, and this seed is, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. He's trying to plant a seed in Eve's heart, in her, in her mind. Ultimately, he's planting a seed in her mind, but he's wanting it to get to her heart. When the seed gets from your mind to your heart, that's when it begins to really affect your life and produce the bad fruit in your life. And the opposite as well. When a good seed gets in your mind, and, it, and it, when it gets in your heart is really when it produces good in your life. Amen? So that's why the mind is when you really need to decipher and discern what is good and what is bad. Because if you're allowing bad stuff to go from your mind to your heart, that's what is going to produce in your life. And, and likewise with good. So Satan here, he's trying to get Eve to shift her perspective and, and to get that seed in her that God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And, and what he's trying to do here. He's trying to separate Eve from God by pitting Eve against him, against God, that God is withholding from her. I want us to understand how, how Satan works. He, and this is how Satan is going to approach you. This is the first thing we need to learn. Satan will always tempt you with, with this thought, that God is withholding something good from you. When God says, you shall not lie, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not fornicate, you, you, know, you shall not uh, steal, things like that. The reason why we're tempted with those things is because we feel like if I partook of that sin or that experience, I would be better off. We, we, Satan always approaches us with the, with the idea that God is withholding something good from us. And we need to understand that God is good, and he wants everything good for you. He, in, in the beginning, when he created everything, he saw that it was all good. Amen? God is not withholding any good thing from you. But Satan, through evil and through lies and temptations, he's desiring to steal the good things that God has given you. Adam and Eve, they had it all. They had it all. But notice how he approaches her. And but, but because Eve and, and Adam, they, they thought that God was withholding from them, they gave in, and they partook of the one tree they couldn't have. So anyway, so this is how Satan approaches us. He tries to get us against God so that um, we, we believe that God is withholding good from us. Amen? Now, Satan is, uh, is asking Eve this question because he's wanting to get Eve to question what God has said. Because God said, you, you can eat of any tree in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the one tree. That's actually what God said. But Satan is trying to get Eve to question what he said. And, and when, we, when we start to think that something is good, is good for us, that God said is bad, that's when we're knocking at sin's door. Okay? We need to... Agree with God. If he said something is bad, we need to know it's bad. We don't need to partake of it and experience it in order to know that it's bad. We just need to take God's word for it. When God says it's bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. We need to take God at his word and believe his word. 
That's where the life comes. Praise God is by believing what God has said. Now, Satan, he wants, you to, he wants to get you to question what God has said. Every lie and temptation in your life will always start with that, questioning what God has said. Never question what God says. Even if you don't understand it at the moment, never question what he says. God is, is a perfect father who's looking after you, and you've got to know that whatever he tells you, it's for your benefit. Amen. It's for your well-being. Don't question what he says. Praise God. We need to agree with God on what he says. And sometimes, you know, just kind of switching up a little bit here, but sometimes we attribute, we, we really, we don't mean to, but we really attribute evil to God by believing that we want more good for us than, than he does. And as Christians, we won't admit that, but it's true that we do that. We think that you know, I want more good for me and my family than God wants for me. Again, we won't admit it, but that's, that's essentially how a lot of Christians believe and how, how we think. And Satan is always, always trying to paint God as some evil guy. And in a large part, he succeeded in many people's minds on this earth. He's always trying to paint God as an evil God. And, and there are many people today who believe that God is evil. They ask the question, why, if God is good, why is all this tragedy happening? Why is all this evil in the earth and this sin in the earth? Why are there so many sins at work in the earth? And, you know, why, why are there so many abortions and deaths and murders and, and, and rapes? And all this, why all this uh, tornadoes and hurricanes? Why all this evil stuff and, and death if God is good? And we've already talked about that, haven't we? On why bad things happen and why evil is in this world and and sin is in this world, and, and that God has no, ha, does not partake in any evil. He, he is the light. He does not fellowship with darkness. Amen? So we've already talked about that for three weeks, actually. But Satan's always trying to paint God as evil. And so there's so many people today who, who attribute so many evil things to God because that's how cunning Satan is. That's how crafty he is. If Satan can get you to believe, and, and this is how Satan gets you to question God's word, is that he gets you to question God's character. If Satan can get you to question God's character, he can get you to question his word. Because if God's character is not perfect and righteous and holy and loving, then who's to say that what God says is, is right and true? So this is why it's so important that we understand the character and the nature of God, that God is good. And he will always be good. And God is not withholding good from us. And God did not tell Eve that she cannot eat of any tree of the garden. He says, I just, I just don't want you to eat off one tree. Have all the other trees. All the other trees are good. And it says here in, in Genesis 2, verse 9, Out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Every tree he made was good. Just that one, he said, don't eat of it, because the consequence is death. You shall surely die if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Satan, he's crafty, and, and, it, and he got Eve. It's, you, you've got you've to see beyond just the words that Satan says. You've got to see the motive and, and the evil that's behind it. Do not question the character of God. Satan is cunning and crafty, and he will do all he can to get you to question God. Well, this happened to me. Well, I, you know, I, this, this happened to me. This person did this to me. And, and so, you know, then, we, then what does Satan do? He's cunning, comes to you and says, if God was good, he wouldn't have let that happen. If God was good, he could have stopped it. But we need to understand that God is not the one who is allowing bad things in our life. Amen? Do not question his character. If you question his character, you question his word. And that's when Satan gets us. Amen? So let's go over here to Romans 1, 24. Romans 1, 24. I just want to read this couple of verses real quick here. Romans 1 is, is a very powerful chapter, by the way, and it explains many things. Um, but 
here in verse 24, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their body uh, among themselves. And the reason God did this is because in verse 25, who, they exchanged the truth of God for the lie. Why would you exchange the truth of God for the lie? Because the lie seems much more appealing to you. Because you're questioning the character of God, and so the truth no longer seems relevant. You exchange the truth of God for the lie and, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Satan, with all of his lies and temptations, he will always get you to look at the created rather than the creator. Satan's goal, again, is to separate you from the goodness of God. If he can separate you from God's goodness, he can manipulate you. We need to hold tight on to Jesus. And I, I emphasize all the time, Jesus is the only way. He is the only truth and the only life in this world. Amen. We need to cling tightly on to Jesus. What, is the, what does the Bible say? Cling to what is good, abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Jesus is the only good thing in this world. And we need to cling on to him because Satan is so desiring to loosen your grip on Jesus so that he can manipulate you and get you with his cunningness and craftiness. And let me tell you, apart from Christ, we don't stand a chance against Satan. There is no truth apart from him. There is no hard-cut truth apart from Christ. It's just whatever you feel is the truth to you. Truth is just relevant to what you believe. And that is not true at all. Jesus says there is a truth and there is a lie. And I am here to distinguish between the two. Because I am the truth. Amen? Amen? We need to cling on to Jesus. Because Satan, he, he uses God's creation, the tree, to separate Eve from God. And Satan will always desire to get you to look at whatever is on this earth. To get you to take your eyes off God, the creator. Don't let Satan get your eyes off God. Don't let Satan, he, he got her eyes off God and he got her to look at the trees. <laughs> Don't let him get your eyes off God. Thank you, Lord. Let's jump down here. We're going to, let's, let's read uh, verse 4 here. And Eve, well, let's just read verse 2. The Eve said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse 4, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. You will not surely die. What did God say? You will surely die. <laughs> in Genesis 2, and in verse uh, 17, Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat it. For the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Really, what it literally says there is dying, you shall die. So the moment they ate of the tree, they didn't die right then, but they began to die right then. And then they eventually died. Okay? So Satan said, you will not surely die. No, God said, you will surely die. But at first, he couldn't just, he couldn't just come to Eve and say, you will not surely. He couldn't just, uh, you know, say the opposite of what God said. He first had to be cunning and to get her to question God's character in order to get her to question God's word. And she'd be like, well, maybe I didn't hear God correctly. Maybe God didn't, didn't mean what he said. Right? We come with all kinds of weird ways to, to compromise. And I'm pretty sure God meant what he said. It's like Brother Frank said. I'm going to keep reference Brother Frank. Believe God. What did, what did he say? What did God say? It doesn't matter what, anything, what anybody else says. What did God say? That's what matters, because everything that comes out of God's mouth is true. Amen? Now, this is what I want us to understand here. There's so much packed in this. In verse 4, Satan said, You will not surely die if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The way that Satan will tempt you with evil to partake of it and give in to it is to get you to believe that there is no consequence. There is no consequence. And that makes evil that much more appealing, doesn't it? When we, when we deceive ourselves into thinking, I can commit this treason against God, this sin, partake of this evil, and there be no consequence. That's what Satan was working on Eve with. There will be no consequence if you do this. Hallelujah. 
Eve had heard of evil. We need to understand that Adam and Eve did not know evil. Everything God created in the beginning was good. They did not know evil. They did not know what evil looked like. They just knew, Eve just knew, that there were consequences if she disobeyed God. That's all she knew. That's all Adam and Eve knew about evil. They had never seen evil in their life. Everything was perfect and good. Praise God, everybody was a vegetarian. <laughs> That's what the Bible says there in Genesis 1. God gave all the herbs and the, you know, for, for everything on the, all, all animals to eat. Can't imagine a lion eating an apple, but something similar to that happened. <laughs> Where a lion was eating grass and things. But the curse came after sin came and corrupted, corrupted the earth and everything in it. But Adam and Eve had, had not known any evil. They had not been exposed to any evil. All Eve knew was that there was a consequence if she disobeyed God. She didn't know why. She didn't necessarily like, understand why it was bad if she disobeyed God and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She didn't understand why or, or know why. She just knew that it was bad because of the consequence, you shall surely die. It's just like with a child. If I tell my, my four-year-old son or three-year-old daughter, don't touch the oven when, you know, when it's on because it's hot. Don't touch the stove when it's on because it's hot. They don't understand <laughs> when they're at a young age what hot means. I think they understand now, but let's go back. Maybe they were one years old, okay? <laughs> at one years old or two years old, they don't really understand why it's bad for them to touch the stove when it's on. They just know there's going to be a consequence. If you touch that stove, you're going to get burned. It's hot. Right? They, don't, they don't understand why they're going to get burned. They, they don't understand that concept yet. But I guarantee if they touch it, they're going to understand real quick <laughs> why we told them not to touch it. Amen? And that's the same way with Eve. God was treating them like little children and said, Look, you've never seen evil, but if you, part, if you disobey me and you commit evil, you will die. They just heard about it. They've never seen it. Okay? So Eve didn't know why it was bad. She just knew it was bad because of the consequences. So Satan knew that if he could remove the consequence aspect of evil, then he could convince Eve that evil was not bad. This is how sin and temptation is. Sin, we need to understand this. Satan will get you to believe there is no consequence for the evil or the sin. And then, and because if we give in to that, then we will begin to believe that evil is not bad. That's why we partake of it. That's how Satan gets us to fall for it. And then once we fall for it, then it's almost like evil comes in and just controls us. And it manipulates us. And it makes us a slave to it. To where, yeah, we know it's bad now, but we can't help ourselves because we have submitted to evil and we've made evil our master and we are a slave to it. So we have no choice but to serve it. Aren't you glad that somebody came and set you free so that you didn't have to, to die a slave to evil? Amen? Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. So no matter what kind of evil you're involved in in your life, even as a Christian, maybe you're committing the same evil over and over again. You're living as a slave. I've been there as a Christian where I felt like I am, I am a slave to this one sin, this one thing. I felt like I was. And I'm telling you that your key to victory is Jesus. He is the truth. Abide in him, just, just as Satan separated you from God and separated you from, from his goodness and got you to question God's character and question God's word, and Satan got you to believe that there is no consequence for evil, you can, you can come right back to Jesus and cling to him because his grace, again, is always there. Like we talked about, his grace does not change for you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So Satan got Eve to, to believe that that evil was not bad because the only thing making evil bad was the consequence. She didn't know why evil was bad except for 
I'll die if I do that. There's a consequence for it. But she didn't understand why, the same way that a little child does not understand why not to touch a hot stove. So Adam and Eve, they never knew, again, they never knew evil in the sense that they had never saw it. In, in Genesis 2, I want us to read this in 16 and 17. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Notice all the trees there, God says, you may freely eat. So they could eat of any tree there besides the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it was free to them. But there's one tree that would cost them. There's one tree that would cost them. And I think it's so interesting that Eve, ultimately, she forsook all the trees that she could freely eat, and she went to the one tree that would cost her her life. To me, that seems like insanity. Why would you forsake all the trees that you could freely eat of so that you could go to the one tree that will cost you? I don't know about you, but I like good stuff that's free. And every tree there was good and free except for one. But he was like, nope, I want to go to the one that's going to cost me. To us, that's insanity, but this is how Satan works to get you to believe that that one tree is good. He gets you to believe that evil isn't bad. It's good for you. Just do it. Just do it. It'll be good for you. You'll like it. It'll feel good. You'll enjoy it. And we'll see in a minute that, that Satan is going to appeal, or evil is going to appeal to, uh, to Eve's senses. And I think it's interesting that we oftentimes are like Eve to where we make life harder on ourselves by eating from trees that cost us rather than eating freely from the abundance of what God has given us. We make life so much harder and difficult and we get ourselves in, in debt. I'm not talking about financial debt. I'm talking about we just, we just feel like we just dig ourselves a hole in life because there's so many good things that God has given us to freely eat of, but, we're, but Satan comes in and we give in to him. We question God's character and all the abundance and the good things that he's given us, and he gets us to focus on that one tree that will cost us. We give up all the abundance of God's goodness for this one thing that will cost us our life. And too often we're digging, a, like I said, we're digging a hole and we're digging ourselves in a hole in life by doing that. God is good to you. And he is not withholding anything good from you. Learn to partake of the, of the, the abundance of the good things that God has freely given you by his grace. Sin cannot offer you anything that grace cannot offer you something better. Amen? Sin has nothing for you in life. It'll cost you. It'll cost you. Why do we forsake so much good for one little bad thing? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to talk about how Satan does that how Satan gets us to a place. We've already talked about it a little bit, but how does he get us to a place we forsake so much good for one little bad thing that will cost us everything? Amen? Let's go here to verse 5. You guys awake this morning? Yes. Okay. I hope it's quiet because we're listening. <laughs> verse 5. For God knows... So the serpent said, You will not surely die... For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, I want us to understand something here. What Satan is talking about, well, let me, let me just say this first. Eve and Adam would become like God, knowing good and evil. Which tells us one thing. Adam and Eve, again did not know evil. They had only known good up to that point. They did not know evil. So yes, in a sense, they would become more like God, but in a sense, they would become less like God. And I want us to understand this, because 
they would become like God, that they would know good and evil. But the only way for Adam and Eve to know good and evil is for them to give in to evil. There was no other possible way for them to see and know evil except for to allow evil to be birthed from them. Satan had to go to Adam and Eve because God gave them authority over the earth. So nothing could get into the earth without Adam and Eve approving of it or giving into it. It's all, authority is huge in the Bible. That's why it's so important that we learn to submit to authority. And we learn and value the importance of authority, whether it be in the church or whether it be in the workplace or school or anything else. Authority is important. And Satan approached, he didn't approach a lion to tempt it. He approached Adam and Eve because the authority that was not given to the lion, it was given to, to us. Amen? So Satan came to them. And the only way, again, for them to know evil like God was to give in to it. But in order to do that, they would become less like God because God, even though he knew good and evil, God had never participated in evil. Amen? Because Satan rebelled against God. So, Sa so, so God saw evil. Satan rebelled against God. So God saw evil, but God never partook of it. In order for Eve and Adam to know evil, they had to actually partake of it. So in a sense, yeah, they became more like God, that they knew good and evil, but they become less like him. They gave up their, their perfection, the goodness. They forsook God to do that. Now in verse 5, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. What is it talking about there? Your eyes will be opened. Satan is not talking about your, your physical eyes here being opened. They already saw, okay? They had perfect vision, 2020 vision. Adam and Eve already, already saw. What he's talking about is that <clears throat> their physical senses would be awakened. Their physical senses would be awakened. And, and what we have to understand is that up to that point, Adam and Eve lived by faith. Again, everything was good. They lived by faith. They didn't live by their senses. They lived by faith. And so Satan told them, your eyes will be opened. And it's true, their eyes would be opened. You notice how Satan, when he talks to you, he mixes in some truth. He lies, but he mixes in some truth, just enough to get you to believe that what he's saying is, is right. So yeah, it's true. They would become more like God, in a sense they would know good and evil. And yeah, their eyes would be opened, but it's not what they're thinking. And again, Satan is continually working on them, chiseling at their hearts, getting them to break down and believe God is withholding good from you. He just doesn't want you to become like him. No, God didn't want them to partake of that tree because he didn't want them to give in to evil and have to die. That's why. It wasn't because God didn't want them to be like him and know good and evil. So up until that time, they had lived and walked by faith. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the Bible says this, the just does, does, shall not walk by sight, but walk by faith. Amen? Amen. So... What Satan is talking about there is that their senses would be awakened. And they would no longer just live by faith. They would begin to live by their senses. And we're going to see here in a minute, in verse 6, how that came to pass. But before we get there, we need to understand that, that their, again, their eyes being opened wasn't a good thing because the only way their eyes could be opened um, by seeing evil was to commit evil themselves. There was no other possibility for them to see evil because everything God made on earth was good and God gave them authority over it all. Amen? So Satan knew he had to get to them to surrender their authority to evil in order to get evil into the earth. And that's Satan's ultimate plan is to get evil in the earth, evil working in your life because evil will kill whatever it comes in contact with. Satan wants to get evil working in your life, but he can't get evil working in your life unless you submit to it. I want us to understand that. Satan can't get you to, to tempt you and get you to commit sin unless you give in to it. You have to surrender your authority. Satan can't make you or force you to do anything. All he has is words. All he has is thoughts. And the way that you obviously deflect those lies and thoughts, cling to Jesus. 
He's the truth. The moment that Satan said, you will not surely die, Eve should have said, shut up. Yes, I will. God said I would. Amen? Just stomp on the serpent's head right there. Would have been done with. Praise God. But she began to question God's character, and that's why she was willing to listen to Satan's voice. The more that you allow Satan to speak into your life, the more deceived you're going to be and twisted you're going to be. He, he will just... He will get you twisted in all kinds of ways. And I've seen people out there who have all kinds of crazy beliefs, and I'm like, how did they get there? I'll tell you how they got there. Satan just got them twisted up in all kinds of confusion. Because they question the character of God, and they question what God said. Amen? I mean, Satan can take you, he can take you as far as you'll let him. He'll take you down the darkest path. I mean, he'll do his worst if you'll let him. But you know how you don't let them? You cling to Jesus. You're not strong enough, but you cling to Jesus who is. For through him you can do all things. Amen? So Satan wants to get evil working in your life to destroy you. So, praise God. Let's go down here to verse 6. Verse 6. Thank you, Lord. So when the woman saw... <clears throat> that the tree was good for food. Notice, her senses, Satan said, your eyes will be open. And you, you start to see the woman is no longer operating by faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is operating according to God's word, standing on God's word, right? There is no faith apart from his word. You can't just conjure up faith. You can't just create faith out of nothing. Faith comes by his word, right? So now, Eve was no longer just in faith, standing on God's word and believing God's word. Now, Eve was beginning to believe Satan's word. And you see that she got away from faith, and she began to operate by her senses. And this is where we really get in trouble. This is what evil is. Verse 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise... She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Satan tricked Eve into thinking that living by her senses was better than living by faith. And this is evil. This is what evil is, is living by our senses. We have senses. Adam and Eve had senses. They could feel they could, they, could, they could see, amen? They could smell, they could hear. They had all their senses before they, they fell and before they sinned, before Satan talked to them, but they never lived by them. They were never dominated by their senses. They lived and were dominated by faith because that's all they knew was, was that goodness. But Eve began to be tricked into thinking that if I live by my senses, that will be better than living by faith. Because I'll be like God. But we know that God doesn't live by his senses. Amen? He lives by faith. But the thing is that your senses will lie to you. Your senses will lie to you. Eve's senses told her that that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that was the only tree that was good. That was the only tree that was desirable and looked good. That's what her senses told her. What did God say? God said every tree is pleasant to the sight and good for food. But Eve believed, because she began to live by her senses, she believed that only one tree was good for her. And, your sin, and notice how when she began to live by her senses, when she saw the food, it was pleasant to the eyes, it was desirable to make one wise. To make one wise. And this is what happens when we live by our senses. Our senses will always lead us to think that we know better than God. Because what we need to understand is that your flesh, which is dominated by its senses, your flesh and the, and, and the spirit of God, faith, always are, are going against each other, as we see in Galatians. The spirit and the flesh are always contrary to one another. Amen? Our senses will always lead us to believe, and that's how your flesh gets you. It dominates you by your senses. It will always lead you to believe that you know better than God. And this is the first time that Eve had begun to get a taste of what evil really is. Again, evil is being dominated 
is, is living by or being dominated by your senses, which is the exact opposite of faith. Let's go over here real quickly to 1 John 2.16. 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. It's not of the Father, but it is of the world. And Eve began to believe that living according to the world was better than living for God. She began to believe that living for the world would get her some good things that she was missing out on by living for God. How many times were we tricked by that lie? Believing that if I partake of this sin, if I go and do this in the world, I will receive something good that God could not give me. How many times have we fallen for that? I've fallen for that. Thank God for his grace, though, amen? But I've fallen for that. I've fallen for that trick. But we need to understand that God is not withholding any good thing from us. There is no good thing in the world. Your senses will tell you there is. Oh, man, this will feel so good if you just do this. You'll, you'll, just, you'll feel so much lighter and better and you, you know, all your problems will go away and your stress will leave and your anxiety will leave. And then you, you partake of that sin or you give into that temptation and you give into that evil and you realize it's not what it was cracked up to be. You realize that you have to pay the price for that sin, that it's not free of charge as Satan tells you. It's not without its consequences as Satan told you. It has consequences and it's death. And God says, that's why I told you, don't do it. Because God says, I'm not withholding any good thing from you. That is not good. That is evil. That is bad. Praise God. We need to hold on to God. We need to believe that he is good in his character. And we need to believe what he says in his word. Amen? We have to be strong. We have to take a strong stance because Satan is not looking for, to, to mess around. We have to be strong in our stance and knowing what is good and what is evil. Amen? We have to cling to Jesus. We have to be strongly founded on the rock of God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In, in Hebrews eleven six, 6, the Bible says there that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So why is faith, why, why is it impossible to please God without faith? Because it's impossible to discern what is good and what is not good apart from faith. Only your faith will tell you what is good and what is not good. Your senses will lie to you. They'll deceive you. The only way to live for God is to live by faith because the only way to know what's good and evil is to know and, and live by faith. Amen. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Evil gets us to forsake what we see by faith for what we see by sight. That's what evil does. Thank you, Lord. It's like... We're trading something so good for something so bad because our senses have lied to us and tell us that God is withholding something good from us. Amen? So we need to live by faith. Amen. Don't give in to your senses. Don't live by your senses. They will lie to you. Let's go down here to verse 7. We've got to speed it up. We're almost done here. You guys getting something today? Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So their eyes were opened, <clears throat> their senses were awakened, and they died. They died to everything good that God had given him. They died to his word, and they awoke to evil desires. And the flesh was born. And sin used our flesh and our senses to create evil desires within us. Praise God. And man came, I'm sorry, mankind used to live by faith, but now their faith was corrupted by sin and sensual desires, and the earth was plagued, and creation turned on itself. And we have all kinds of wars and, and plagues of the day, and millions and billions have been decimated, and that's what we have because Satan convinced Eve that God was not good and that he was withholding good from them. He got us to question God's character. And he got us to question God's word. 
and he got us to believe that there is no consequences for evil. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Let's go over here to Matthew 6.23, and we'll just wrap it up here. Matthew 6.23, what does Jesus say? But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Your whole body will be full of darkness. So if we see and live life through the lens of our fleshly emotions and our fleshly desires, we will give in to evil and die. But if we walk and live by faith, we shall live. If your eye is bad, if you see life and perceive the things of life through your, sen- through your senses, that's how you live, your evil is going to take control of you. Even as a Christian, even as a Christian, you can, you can live by your senses. Yes, you've believed on Christ. Yes, you've repented. Yes, you're going to heaven. But you can still choose to live by your senses and by your flesh. And you can still be allowing evil in your life. And then you'll question God and say, God, I thought you were good. I gave my life to you. I did this for you. And God says, the reason you have evil working in your life and death working in your life is because you're still living by your senses. You haven't chosen to walk by faith. God says, you're not in my word. You're not in my word. And so when you're not in his word, faith is not coming. And you're left with nothing but your senses to live by. So we need to stop blaming God for the evil and death operating in our life. And we need to start looking at God's word and say, maybe the reason that evil is in my life and operating in my life is because just like with Eve, I'm living by my senses. I'm allowing my senses to guide and dictate my decisions in life. And that's why we're dying. That's why evil is getting the best of us. God is calling us to live by his word. Cling to what is good. Live by faith. Hallelujah. And Satan will come to you with the same things that he came to Eve with, but you have God's word to stand on. You have the Holy Spirit to help you in your weaknesses. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah, to make you stand. Let's go ahead and stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Misael, can I have you come play, please, brother? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let me read this in Romans 7, 25. Romans 7, 25. (laughs) In verse 24, Paul said, Paul was dealing with this, living by his senses. And he said, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? In verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. You choose what you're going to serve, the law of sin or the law of, the, of the law of God. You choose. Are you going to be dominated by faith or dominated by your senses? And praise God for Jesus who made a way and said, I've made a way for you to once again walk and live by faith. Because God is telling us there is no life in your senses. You have senses, but living by them will kill you. What does the Bible say in Romans 8? To be carnally minded is death. Carnally minded, fleshly minded, living by your senses. But to, to be spiritually minded, to live by faith is life and peace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just as the man that Brother Frank was talking about, he lived by faith. He didn't see it, but he lived by faith. And he says, I will receive what God has has put in my heart. And he received it. But his senses were telling him, you don't have it. You're not going to get it. But faith told him, it's already yours. Because God gave him that promise and gave him that word. Hallelujah. It's all based on God's word. It all comes back to what God has said. Don't question what he said. Don't question his character. It's everything good for you is in here. Jesus says, I have come. I have come to save the world. I've come to share. Yeah, humanity failed, but Jesus said, I've come to restore humanity with God to once again partake of the good things that God has for us. Hallelujah. And I believe that God is calling us home this morning. (laughs) If you've been living by your senses, 
God is calling you home this morning to begin to live by faith. God didn't create you to live by your senses. He created you to live by faith. Use your senses, but live by faith. Hallelujah. That's the way of life. If you're in here and you, you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to believe on him, I'm telling you that he came because God so loved you and he came not to condemn you, but to save you from your sins. And if you're in this here this morning, you, you want to give your life to Jesus and believe on him who can save you from an eternity in hell, who can save you from all of your sins. It doesn't matter what kind of evil you've gotten wrapped up in, what kind of lies and confusion you've gotten wrapped up in. Jesus came to set the captive free. He came to restore sight to the blind. Hallelujah. If that's you in here and you want to give your life to the Lord, I want you to go ahead and raise your hand so we can pray with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I trust we're all saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We get to do something great. This morning, we get to honor the Lord's debt and honor his sacrifice. So if I could have you just come forward, we're going to partake of communion. So grab yourself some bread representing the body of Christ and some juice representing the blood of Christ. And we will honor what the Lord has done for us. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you thankful for Jesus? I said, aren't you thankful for Jesus? Hallelujah. He made the way. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. thank you father we thank you this morning as i came into church i just had such a just a gratitude in my heart of thankfulness and man we just need to thank god thank you lord we thank you father we thank you father sometimes when you don't know what to say when you don't know what to do and you're just struggling just start thanking god amen start start thanking god and you'll just feel faith begin to rise within you Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, is everybody good? Okay. It's so awesome seeing you guys up here. You guys are awesome. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you, drink, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to proclaim your death. What an honor it is to honor the sacrifice of Jesus to recognize what he's done for us, that his body was broken for us, that by his stripes we are healed. And we don't take that for granted. We don't belittle that, but we magnify and glorify that because you made the way for us to be restored and whole. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may partake of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the same way, Father God, we thank you for the blood of Christ that was shed to establish a new covenant with us that no longer would we be separated from you. No longer would we need to offer sacrifices daily just to fellowship with you, but we could come freely to your throne of grace by the blood of Christ. 
who washes us clean as snow, Lord. So we thank you for the blood that was shed for us, for the forgiveness of sins. And all of our sins are washed away forevermore, never to be remembered again because of the blood of Christ that runs freely in our life. And I thank you that your blood screams paid for on our behalf. And it screams righteousness on our behalf and holiness on our behalf. And we thank you for that. And we receive that. And we honor that in Jesus' name. Amen. You may partake of the blood of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have some brothers coming around to collect those cups from you. With that being said, we'll go ahead and pray. Father God, thank you for this day. We thank you that we are tremendously blessed right now where we stand, whether we feel like it or not, because your word says that we are blessed in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, that as we believe that, we will see that blessing operate in our life. So we thank you as we go, we are blessed. And we thank you, God, that we're going to share this blessing with the world, that Jesus is alive and he has restored us to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to remind you guys, next Sunday is Mother's Day. All the mothers, praise God, man. Thank God for mothers, right? So we have a special service. We're going to be, it's the same time, all right, but a special service to be celebrating the mothers. We're going to love on you. We got some little goodies, some giveaways, okay? We've been working behind the scenes to honor you all. So uh, we're going to show you how much we appreciate you. Pastor Sally Come on, Pastor Sally, she's over there rocking the baby. She's going to be preaching on Sunday, okay? So y'all better, y'all better bring some pitchers of water because it's going to get hot in here. She's going to bring the word of fire, amen? Love y'all. God bless y'all.